Yeah. 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 Got white gums and got very concerned and decided to bring him up here. He's actually looking a little better. We had to rush him to the vet, so we're hoping he's going to be all right because he's just he was doing so well right up until about an hour and a half ago. And so Wendy's up cleaning the upper deck to try to, to try to take your mind off what's going on with Doc and we're just devastated right now. Um, he's he suffered a, an, an internal hemorrhage um, that they feel is likely the result of a, tum of a tumor on his liver. He had an ultrasound yesterday and um, uh, you know I, yeah, I'm not qualified to, to, to understand ultrasounds. We, we were there when the guy did it and you know, yesterday he was just, he, he, we had to pick him up with his harness and he couldn't even stand up. He, he was just dead weight and I carried him all the way to a taxi cab and then we took him to the vet. And the vet um, did, you know, it was wonderful. She spoke English very well and um, put him on fluids. His, his gums were just white. Um, and apparently it's some, some it's, it's, it, they knew that there was a blood issue. Um, so... He went to the hospital last night. They did a blood transfusion and kept him on fluids, on an IV drip for fluids. And he's he's up and, and walking, which is which is just heartbreaking because we we know that that if it's a tumor that's burst, that you know we're, it, it, there's nothing that we can do. So anyway, they're going to give him a CT scan later today and see what it is. And I'm just holding out a last little bit of hope that it's a it's a hemorrhage that's not related to a tumor and that can be kind of operated on you know with with a good you know with a good prognosis for recovery because we'll stay here you know as long as as needed to have them have them heal but it, they were talking about tumors whether they metastasized or whether they're benign or whatever and you know, if it's really cancer, then you know, then there, then he's gonna he's gonna have to be put down. We, you know, we've been through this before. Golden retrievers get cancer all the time. I mean, they all die of cancer. They they would live much longer if they didn't. Um, and we, you know, even yesterday before this all happened, he was he jumped up onto the boat. He jumped back down off the boat, and you know, there's a part of us that says, well, maybe you know, all this jumping around and everything was what caused it, but. He has to be able to be. Um, he has to be able to be uh, able to, to to move. He can't just be. Um, I mean, if he got old and he just wanted to lay around, we'd be fine with that. But he has to. He has to. He wants to jump on and off the boat. He, he's. It's. It's not a problem for him normally. So, anyway, we're just. We're just heartbroken right now. So we'll keep you posted on where this all goes. Well, so today it's the second day. Lost stock yesterday. We're both pretty broken up about it. Um, it's you know it would be a little easier perhaps if it wasn't just you know socked in pea soup everywhere. Um, but um, you know we're gonna move on and just, it is what it is. I went back to the hospital this morning and got his harness and his collar which we'd forgotten yesterday and um it's really rough I miss our duck dog he was the best dog you know, he came all this way to be with us, um, and I think he knew he was sick, and he still managed to hold out until he got with us. And I just want him to, be, I wanted him to come and be able to play in the ocean and have a good time. When we were in Les Shows, uh, I was able to take him to the beach, and he got to get his paws wet and see what the waves looked like, and that was great. But he never got to go in the water and be on a beach like here. And I, I miss him so because I wanted him to have as much fun as we're having. 
and we were having such a great time and he was the best dog. He was so well behaved and so obedient and so happy. He, he, you just can't imagine a, a happier dog. He always was delighted with whatever you were doing. If you if you were if you were sewing, he was delighted. If you were on the computer, he was delighted. If you were going for a walk, he was really delighted. If you was gonna get a cucumber, he loved it. He was so excited about that, and he just uh, made our lives full. And we miss him terribly. And I, I wouldn't trade a single day uh, of him uh, being with us uh, for this. And I, I just wish he could have stayed longer. You know, he, um, this dog lived the life. I mean, he literally did. He was like the kid growing up that had parents at a pool or something, you know. And he, he, um, he got to go to the ski area with us and hang out with other dogs. He got to, you know steal hot dogs from people and get fed snacks that he shouldn't have had. He spent, you know, Thanksgiving under the table with people like throwing pieces of turkey down to him. And um, then he traveled the world. He, he got to get go to, you know, to Portugal and Spain. And just, you know, he had he had a he had a great a great life. I mean, very few humans get a chance to do, you know, that the, the things that he did. And um, he just, uh, you know, took everything in stride. Uh, you know, it was he lived in the moment, like dogs do. And um, he uh, got to see porpoises off the bow wake of the boat. He got to, he, he was totally fascinated by it. The, the birds would hover in the wind, like they, they'd catch the thermal kind of where the, the, the wind current off the sail and just kind of, kind of hover there off the boat. And he was sitting there in the cockpit looking at them. It was, it was, he was truly amazed by it all. And um, he got to fly on a plane. He, you know, it was probably wasn't the best experience for him, but um, you know, to, to show up someplace in a completely different time zone, probably eight hours off of back in the United States. I mean, he was so good about it. He was you know? so good about it, and, and um, I just wish we could have had maybe another month. I, I, I just it would have been that much better if that happened. But anyway, you know, this is the way life goes. This. You know, it's the, it's the, we were, the price you pay for having a dog. You get so much love, and at the end, there's heartbreak. Yeah. You know, the, the, the irony of it all is um, we were in Leshos, and we were getting his pet passport done, and so we had gone and found a vet, and she had seen him literally the same day, and he was fine. And then the tumor burst, and then he wasn't fine. And I have to thank God that we had gone and found a vet that spoke English, that we could go back to, that helped us deal with the situation we were in and got him to a veterinary hospital. And an excellent made, one. An excellent one in Luscious. Oh my God, they were great. And they took such good care of him and they put him on blood plasma and fluids and they kept him alive um, you know, um, in a situation what to do. where we had to, we, you know, we had to diagnose what what was still what was wrong with them and whether it was curable or not. And once we knew it was incurable, we were able to to finish the process in a way that made it bearable for us. We didn't just lose him; we were able to say goodbye properly. And you know, when when we had to put him down, and my heart breaks to think of it, but. He just, you know, he, he was already, you know, slipping away, and, um, and it, it was very peaceful, and, and he was just the best dog.